Sie haben die erste Inbetriebnahme. You have successfully completed the initial commissioning of your open controller. Great. It is now time to replicate its hardware configuration in the engineering framework TIA Portal. Implement some crucial settings and then download the entire configuration to the device for the first time. To do all that, we will create a new project in the TIA Portal. We add a new device and select our open controller. We can now see our configured open controller in the device view. Here it is with our onboard X2 interface, which is allocated directly to the PC station. Here it is with our removable bus adapter, which is allocated directly to the software controller. Here on the right, we see our configured CPU 1505S software controller and our WinCC runtime advanced. Should you need additional communication modules, like a Profibus module or modules on an ET200SP basis, then you will find these on the right in the assembly catalog and can add these at any time. The bus adapter is configured as an RJ45 model as standard. This will have to be changed if you are using the Fast Connect model. Select the Fast Connect bus adapter from the hardware catalog and drag and drop it onto the configured bus adapter. You will now see a small icon above the arrow, which should allow you to access the replacement dialog. We will now release the mouse button and a dialog opens in which you will see the currently configured bus adapter vis-à-vis -vis the new bus adapter. Clicking OK will configure the Fast Connect bus adapter. We don't want to do this right now, so we click Cancel instead. As a final step in the hardware configuration, you can now configure the server module which completes the CPU with the peripheral modules. You will find the server module in the assembly catalog in the section Server Modules. You can move it to slot 2 using drag and drop. Should you ever forget this step, then the TIA portal will automatically insert it for you during project generation. Let's now have a closer look at the settings of our IP addresses. We click the X2 interface in the device view and go to Properties in the Inspector window. We can see that the configured specified IP address, 192.168.1.1, matches the IP assigned to the open controller during the initial commissioning. We will now do the same for the X1 interface, our bus adapter, and see that here too an IP address was provided that is identical to the one set in the software controller. Let us now have a look at the most important properties of the software controller. We click the entry Software Controller in the device view and then go to Properties at the bottom of the inspector window. Several options for a startup of the software controller are available under Startup. This may be required after a Windows start or in the event of a fault. System diagnostics are enabled as standard. You won't have to do anything here. You will need to enable the web server here if you want to use it. Further down in the interface overview, you can specify which of two interfaces you want to use to access the web server. Both interfaces are enabled by default, and we will not change that setting. Still further down, we find an option for using the hardware LEDs of the open controller for displaying the status of the software controller. We do want that, so we go ahead and enable this option. 
As a last option, you can decide to store your buffered data in the mass storage or the embedded CPU RAM. Embedded RAM is a non-volatile memory where up to 410 kilobytes of data can be stored. The data will still be available after voltage failure or disconnection. For our project at hand, we will need an HMI as well. We will use the HMI wizard to create some system images with a relevant navigation. Right-click WinCC Runtime Advanced in the device view and select the HMI wizard. Simply apply all default settings and close the dialog. The HMI wizard will now generate the required images in the background. We will now need an HMI connection between WinCC Runtime and the software controller for those two components to work together correctly. We need to change over to the network view and configure the connection view. The HMI connection is pre-selected in the list box here at the top and we will now hold the mouse button down and draw a connection from WinCC Runtime to the software controller. Our configuration is now complete and we can load our project for the first time. Please note that you will only be able to load the complete PC station when loading the configuration for the first time and that you will need to use the X2 interface to do so. We will now change over to the device view once more and click to select the PC station. We now select the download button in the function bar. In the download menu, we set our connection type, specify the interface with the PG, which should be in the same IP address range as the open controller, and here, right at the bottom, we specify the X2 interface on the open controller. We then start a search and find the open controller as our communication partner. We click Load, and then the TIA portal will begin to compile the project and prepare the download. We go back to Load once again. Basic settings are now being transmitted, after which a complete restart of the system will follow. Once the system has restarted, the load process will continue with the configuration data. To do so, we click Load once again, and then Finish to complete the process. We have now successfully completed our first hardware configuration and the first download to the device.